Howdy folks, Kirk, Dan, and Carl here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today, I'm going to show you how to spread out some straw bell walls. What I'm doing right here is what we call hydrating the straw. Why am I hydrating the straw? Because we want a mechanical bond. I'll, I'll tell you some things about straw bells. Um, I've, done, I've had my share of them. Now the straw bells, let me show you something on the side. When you, when you do the straw bells, guys, you build them up, you wire them. There's, there's a lot of advantages to straw bell houses, and there's a couple disadvantages. But notice this right here. Now you see, there's nine inches right there. So what we're going to do is, what we're going to try to do uh, is scratch and brown this wall in this video and there's a lot of things you have to take into consideration why do you wet the straw because we want a mechanical bond we want this stucco right here to embed in it and if it's dry what happens it sucks the moisture out of this stucco way too fast that's a good and a bad thing because we're going so thick I wanted to suck the water or the moisture out of this stucco. I'll begin and uh, Dan, you want to give me a hand? Uh, we're putting on uh, a particular stucco. You can get on that side of me. We're putting on, uh, again, about nine inches here and we're skimming some areas where we want to try to get this wall as smooth as possible. No such thing as a straight wall for a uh, straw bale. Uh, no such thing. You could try, guys, but uh, that's really difficult. Another thing, too, is for straw bale, there's a whole bunch of materials that you could use. And since I was setting up, I let this mud get hard, which is not a real bad thing. I'll put the hard mud where I want it because I want it to harden quick because we got a lot of mud coming on this wall. This mud right here, well, this wall here could take about uh, a ton. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for all the, the hollow spots right now to put this mud on here. Another thing too, guys, if, if you're going over straw bale, Know that a hawking trial is a good way to put it on because with straw bale, you want to push it into the straw. You want to embed this. I've used a pump a few times with straw bale, but the best way to do it is to apply it by hand. That way you push it in hard. How am I going to put nine inches right there and expect it to adhere? or to set up and dry and do the next coat immediately, I'll show you. Why we're, let me pull the rest of this off, McKenzie. Ah, all right, brother, give me that mud right there. We got a few hide carriers. Why? <laughs> because there's a lot. here for 15 minutes and put it on and if you notice what I'm doing is I'm putting it on the low spots the ones that take a lot of stucco and yeah we're gonna get some dropouts that's the nature of what we're doing anybody that says well I can do nine inches and not expect dropouts can't be done guys And what we're using here is, yeah, it's cement and sand. Uh, rather than go into what materials to use, guys, there's, uh, there's 20 different cements, guys. There's uh, uh, all kinds of cements and all kinds of uh, methods. Like you put three parts sand or two parts 
But instead of getting into all of that boring stuff, I'll tell you a favorable material to use for straw bale. And I'll explain why. Now, personally, uh, I was here earlier and I was telling the guys, well, the mud you guys are using, the mixing, uh, we'll use it because you got it. You got a lot. Well, of course, we can't throw it away. We'll use it up. This is uh, Portland cement, and they're mixing it with sand. Nothing wrong with that. That's, uh, that's how the majority of things are done. But for you folks who are doing straw bell, I'll give you a huge tip on materials right now. Uh, I would recommend you just go with BMI 690 uh, fibered cement. Why BMI 690 fibered? Because they have silos which are like 20 tons. You can order a silo up to 37 tons. What does that mean? That means you can have a machine up here rather than keep going to the material yard three times a day to get all the sand and cement necessary for this. You just get a silo. A silo is a humongous thing and you, what you do is you put your wheelbarrow right under the silo, push a button. It electronically mixes perfect mud every time. And that silo is a mixture of cement and hydraulic lime. So the, the lime is the key for straw bale, guys. Most people don't know that straw bale should breathe. So six, BMI 690 is the way to go for this particular stuff. Uh, again, we're not using that, but I could use it, or you could use any material known to man, but it's best to use the ones that uh, have hydraulic lime when you're doing um, straw bale. There's a whole lot of things uh, related why. Okay, now, what I'm doing here is continuing. Now, I think this wall right here will take me and Dan quite a while to do. If you guys want to watch us do it, you're more than welcome to. I'm in Sonora right now, and this is Dan and Carl's job. The two youngest is Dan, Carl on the uh, camera. They do a lot of work up here in Tuolumne, Sonora. Uh, where else are, are you guys working, Dan? Tracy, Woo! That's a lot of work. A lot of work. All over the Central Valley. Okay. Uh, Jay and I are in the Oakland area. So these guys, what they did is they put all the wire, uh, tacked it on there. That's a, that's a job within itself. But again, now I'm going nine inches there and here's something maybe that doesn't show but that's about eight inches uh let me get rid of this that's about eight inches deep there too so just to prove a point guys i'm gonna do this beautiful mackenzie's using those buckets uh had i known he didn't have a hod i would have brought a hod so right here again, this is going to take a lot of stucco. So I might as well put some up here now. Because we want this to set up. Beautiful, Dan. No, the last time I did a straw bale house was here in Sonora. That was about 20 years ago. It was snowing on us. And we were working so hard, so fast that we had our shirts off and our heads were steaming. It was steam coming off all of our heads and that was back here in Sonora. Anyway, while I'm working, I'll tell you a couple facts about this. 
If you have a straw bale house, guys, one of the one of the benefits of it is that, say, like one of the castles in England or uh, anywhere in the UK, those castles are rock. Now, those castles, six thousand years old, they're done with lime, which breathes. But a castle made of rock, you'd have to have a fire on 24-7 just to stay warm. Why'd I bring up that where it has nothing to do with this? Is because a straw bale house advantage. Once you heat a straw bale house, and where this snows up here. In fact, it's cold as hell today, but I'm already warming up. A straw bale house, once you heat this up, It'll stay insulated. You just heat it up once, and then you won't lose that that heat, like say a brick house or a block house or rock or uh, things of that nature. So there's a lot of benefits of straw bale. There's that. The fact is fireproof. It's rodent proof. It's earthquake resistant. <laughs> now thick these walls are, and if say a rat by chance happen to get into it, a car hit it. A rat can't eat that stuff, so it wouldn't live in it. It's like, ooh, how much mud you guys got left? Well, we gotta, I tell Dan to start helping you. While these guys are getting me more mud, I'll just show you something. Uh, all right. Yeah, fill it up, man, because you know I'm gonna spread it fast. You can do this, guys. This is uh, called scratching it. And why do I scratch it? Because the, the straw, even though I wet it for the mechanical bond, is still, I didn't wet it too, too much. Because if I wet it too, too much, then this will never dry. I want this to dry fast. So I'm scratching it right now, guys. This is for my next coat to adhere. It adheres with a mechanical bond. Again, there goes that mechanical bond. Mechanical bond is, say, oh, that's the strongest you could ever get with stucco. And that means if and when this dries out, so I was just going to scratch coat this, for example, guys. Okay, all I do is scratch coat this. Then I put scratch marks in it. The next day or two days later, we come back, we wet that, and that the wet coat of here, the new stucco, will adhere by that mechanical bond. That's suction on suction, mechanical bond, permanent. A chemical bond is when you use a bonding agent like weldcrete, plaster weld, or things like that. We're doing the strongest bond known to man. So now this mud here is actually a little bit more usable for me because earlier we were setting up and I just, whew, we got some dropouts, but that's okay. When you're doing straw bale, guys, you're going to have dro dropouts. But what you can do is you put new fresh mud now in that dropout. Then I continue coming here, and I take this old mud, as long as it's just spread, and put it right back. Right here where this corner is pretty deep, I'm going to do the old plaster and hawk trick to give me that corner and to make certain it dries out this time I'm going to put some scratch marks in it. Getting tired Dan? <laughs> These guys are coming up two flights of stairs. That's a young man's job. You can have that. I'll just apply it. Now Dan and Carl, they told me about this job a month ago. And last night they called me and said, Hey, Dad, we got a proposition for you. And I said, Yeah, what's that? They said, Well, I know you haven't worked because of the rain in at least a month. And because of the holidays, you haven't worked. How would you like to go get paid to get a workout in. I said, well, 
what kind of pay? Uh, a sandwich? He says, no, we'll do better than that. We'll buy pizza. I uh, said, what, pepperoni? He says, no, we're going to get you the round table gourmet veggie, the one you like. And I thought, okay, you guys got yourself a deal because you heard that saying, use it or lose it. If I'm not working, guys, I'm losing it. Uh, that means all my strength and muscle are going to dissipate, disappear. These guys don't want me sick wearing diapers and have to take care of me, so they want to make sure I stay fit. Another story. Anyway, guys, you see where we're going with this? Uh, I'm going to give Carl a break on that camera because it's been like 10 or 15 minutes. And we're going to apply some more. These guys got to mix up some more. So we're going to take a break on the camera. We're going to get some more mud on here unless you guys want to listen to me ramble about a whole bunch of useless stuff that don't amount to nothing. All right, guys, here's an old plastering trick. How come nine inches won't adhere or float or defy gravity? Because it doesn't do that. There's no corner aid here because we're rounding these off. So I put this piece of wood here, screwed it in, and let the wall. In an hour, hopefully, when I pull that, that will hold that nine inches in a corner. Guys, nine inches of, of uh, plaster or stucco, and this is, we're using um, a common. Uh, it'll do so much, but it won't defy gravity. So we're going to see what that looks like after lunch. And what I'm doing now is just using up the rest of this because we are going to take a few minutes to uh, have a, a snack. And here's what I'm doing. Yike! Okay. I'm just filling it out, guys. Filling it out right there. It's pretty uh, hollow. It's going to take, we want to go about to this point here in order to make it flush. And one bad thing about my Congo trowel or hawk. This is the biggest hawk made, this biggest trowel. 18 inches by 5, it flexes. And this is not a complete radius. It's straight right here. The one that complete radius is are four inches wide, and those are for concrete. You push in the aggregate. For plastering, those are useless. This is a plastering trowel. It's for actually swimming pools, but I'm using it for this. Anyway, we're going to finish off this mud right here. Just slapping it up there and letting that, uh, letting this straw suck out the moisture. Then by the time we come back, hopefully it's ready for a second coat or a third or fourth or fifth because as fat as, fat as we're going here, we're going coat after coat in order to go however uh, thick we need to be. Okay, guys, we're at a stage now. I'm going to let this wall set. Uh, we only got another hour of daylight, so it's not going to be enough time. I'm going to come back tomorrow, but... Had we had enough time and started early instead of at, say, 2 o'clock, we could have uh, maybe finished this. Can you do this thick without accelerators? No way. It can't be done because of gravity. And the more I touch this, this 9 inches, the packs will break. And what are packs, guys? That means that stucco has set. Now, if you keep messing with it, it's going to crack. It's like a guy called me. He says, hey, Kirk. I'm using this material, but it's cracking like an egg everywhere. I said, that particular material, you can only mix three to five minutes. If you mix it more than three to five minutes, which you're doing, by the time it sets, it'll hairline and crack like an egg. So the same thing happens here. Now we got six to eight inches and someplace ten. I got this amount of excess material. Now, it's not the end of the day, but I can't touch this wall. We have a lot of holidays right in here. I could spread that. But just to prove a point of breaking the packs, I'm going to spread this out. Now, when I spread this out, that means I'm disturbing these packs. In bodybuilding, they say, uh, Arnold said one time, well, don't jog because I don't want to break the packs, the muscles. 
The same thing with stucco. I'm going to see if I can break the pack intentionally. Well, actually, if I put too much pressure, it'll fall off. So I'm going to use as light a pressure as I can just because I don't want to waste or use this material someplace that I don't need it. And tomorrow will be a lot less material that I have to uh, apply. And speaking of uh, applying, guys, I use a big trowel, but you guys use your skill level. If you think, man, my arm is not that strong, get a smaller hawk. And if you think, uh, ah, lie in the eye, ah, okay. Guys, always wear a long sleeve shirt. Why? This has lie in it. And if lie gets on your skin, it burns the heck out of you. It goes through your system transdermally. It leaves big scars. When it goes in your eye like it just did, it's no fun. Come on now. All right, I'm trying to still prove a point. Ah. All right. I'm going to use the rest of this mud up here. And guys, again, uh, this is a big hawk, a big trowel. This is perfect for swimming pools or straw bales. Now... Getting back to hoping I don't break the packs, I'm going to just keep putting it on lightly in the areas that I already know are somewhat hollow. And tomorrow when we come, we're going to put a second coat on this. And can you finish this with uh, this particular material? Absolutely. We're going to show you how to finish it um, with this same material and how to open it up, make it breathe, and we'll give you some tips on when you're completely done. If, uh, if it does crack, the material, say like, what to use to patch any hairline crack. We want this at peanut butter consistency. Our finished mud, we're not gonna put a finish on this, by the way, we're putting two coats. But if we were to put a finished coat, we would want that at whipping cream consistency and no sand in it. That's when this is all said and done. So what I'm doing is I want all this to be even tomorrow. So a lot less mud to spread. I'm just barely putting it on here, guys. Barely putting it on just to see if I could. <laughs> to see if I could. Where it won't just break that pack. And what that does is if I'm in the other room and I'm plastering, you could hear it. It's like cows shitting on flat rock. It's just plop. You hear it. You go, oh, man. It, the the stuck was way too thick. It fell off. So we don't want that. Let me hear it. I'm nine inches. or I'm pretty thick right here. But to prove a point, put a little bit thicker so that tomorrow my job is a little easier. Now watch, if I put pressure right here. Okay, no, very little pressure, very little pressure. Here's another last tip before I shut this off. You see how that's kind of falling off. If I hold this trowel sideways like this, now I'm opening it. If I hold it flat, that closes it. It can't breathe. That will fall off if you want to dry it faster. Hold it on edge like snowboarding. One last piece before I call it a night. There it is. And of course, any time you got it that thick, guys, put some scratch lines. And tomorrow we'll show you how to uh, put that second coat. Or you can call it third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh because we are mighty thick here, guys. All right, guys. If you're still watching this, you've got a... A straw bale house. Now this is the next day and we've only been here about 15 minutes. Okay, we mixed up some more. Now look at this, look at this hole right here guys. We got, we still have about six inches. I took the worst wall. This is a two-story house. It's about 4,500 square feet. So I looked at all the walls here. There's a lot of walls. I said give me the worst wall. I don't want the best wall. An apprentice can do the best wall. Give me the worst wall. This one's out of plumb by, say, 10 inches everywhere. So we put about seven yesterday, coat after coat. And right now, it's snowing. <laughs> How ironic. We started, I started my last 
Well, I did my last straw bale in the snow. I finished my career in the snow. Anyway, they mixed up the mud. It was kind of wet because the sand was wet. So what I'm doing, rather than hydrate this with water, I'm uh, pulling out the water, the excess water. And this is not really uh, stiff mud. This is perfect mud. So I'm using it to add another coat right now. We want to go fat and ugly, guys. Fat and ugly. Don't worry about it looking pretty. We don't want pretty. We want fat and ugly. Can I match sheetrock finish like this? Yes. But it will take me a long time. It'll take anybody a long time. The good is, uh, well, I already explained the good advantages of straw bell. The only disadvantage is you better be a plastering family because it'll cost you a fortune to plaster something like this. But anyway, we're pretty good at that. And as you're loading the straw bells, I remember being 20, loading the straw, loading the straw. At the end of the day, your arms feel like they're going to fall off your body. So we would throw the straw on there, crooked as hell, crooked like a dog's hind leg because it's so heavy. And we would think, we'll fix it with the stucco. Anyway, that's what we're doing now. We're fixing it with the stucco. This wall here, it's, it's, I'm not going to get rid of everything, make it look like sheetrock. But what we're going to do is we're going to give it an old world charm finish. We'll show you that. But I'm going to go outside for a minute and show you something else. All right, guys, I want to show you something. 20 years ago, they did this. And we're doing the inside now, or Carl and Dan are doing the inside now. You notice these walls. These are just as bad as what we're doing. I mean, we got holes and valleys every which way. It's snowing, too. Uh, come this way, Carl, please. Uh, and try to follow me without this waterfall of uh, melted snow getting on you. You guys see these humps? Can you see this? If I were to take a two by four here, it's off by a foot and a half, maybe two feet. But that's uh, the reality. Come right around here, Carl, and stay under the eaves so the camera doesn't get soaked. And just show this too. Okay, guys, this is normal. This is normal with a two-story house and learning while you go. Now I'll show you what Carl and Dan did. All right, this is what Carl and Dan did about a month ago, and then it started the rain, so they stopped. Now with experience, you can get the walls a lot straighter, a lot truer, a lot plumber. Uh, they've got some X bars here that they put for reinforcement. In order to not go five inches, they just kind of built around them. But anyway, not to show, uh, say, a, a printer's work to Dan and Carl's work, there's a huge difference, guys. It, it really takes uh, experience to understand how to stucco over straw, how to stucco over lava rock and things of that nature. We're going to go back uptown and try not to bore you guys with too much information. I know half of you are thinking, too late. We're going to go upstairs and I'll show you how to finish this. All right, guys. We're at a point where we're going to finish this. It's snowing outside. Ooh, joy. If it's 32 degrees outside, guess how warm it is in here? It's a trick question, guys. It's about 32 degrees in here, too. There's no heating in here yet. Now, what I want to show you guys is this is just the finish work. Now, people who do this finish, they want something distinctive or old world or charming. They don't want what the 20 and 30 year old males got to have. They got to have a perfectly straight wall. That's... Uh, I would recommend sheetrock if you want that. Anyway, what I'm doing is we're showing you this. And, and by the way, where Carl and I, Dan was sitting over there having a cup of coffee. And this dropped out. It just went, Psh! Carl says, well, I guess there's uh, cows crapping on flat rocks. And I said, well, whatever it is, we'll cross that bridge and we get over there. We came here and I looked up and this whole thing fell out because it's 32 degrees in here. And we put about four inches there on top of the seven or eight yesterday. It happens, guys. Because these guys are going to be here a while, we just scratch that back in and leave it alone. Don't worry about it, guys. Uh, right over here where we have the transition, uh, I rounded it off. We called this bullnosing, guys. That's bullnose. For you, uh, you guys, homeowners, get some bullnose corner aid and put it on so you don't have to work so hard. And then I just scratch this in so when they come back, they could fix that. Okay, transition, guys. Uh, transition um, you can give it a steel trial finish guys like okay now that's still that's still trialed right there now what is gonna happen if I leave it still trialed um, this might be a little too deep for most people but this is gonna crack like an egg 
uh, because you can't seal a finish. Seal it. S-E-A-L. Seal it. It's, it's sealed, basically. So it, no way to breathe. It's going to crack. You take a float. You take a brush. There's a lot of ways to do this, guys. You can put a finish in that. But what I'm doing is I'm just bringing out a little bit of the sand. And what that does is it allows it to breathe now. It's not locked in. And, and by the way, guys, too, uh, we're up in Tuolumne. This is uh, Dan and Carl's job. I'm just here uh, getting some exercise. And who am I to give information or give advice? I've been doing videos for 15 years. Um, some videos have taken us a month to do. We have a, about a thousand. Before that 15 years, I had a 12-man crew for about 25 years. We did houses all over the Bay Area, some on magazines. Big deal, that doesn't mean crap. Uh, there's no glory in being the best, guys, except you work your butt off. But anyway, I had 12 men. We worked year round and all these men had job, uh, mortgages so I had to keep working so we worked a lot. I got 45 years in this trade and I still love doing it guys. Remember this, I'm getting paid to work out. Well actually they're feeding me to work out here but getting back to the float guys. Now this float has got cement on it so if I have stucco on here what's going to happen? If I go like <laughs> the other, yesterday I tried to prove a point by drop in a pack on purpose. I'm too experienced to do it. So that pack dropped while we were having a break. But here's, here's something to remember. If Once you build up stucco on your float, clean it off. Get that water. Clean that off or it's going to bring out the aggregate. We, we want to leave a, a distinctive finish. We want to open it up so it doesn't crack too much. So you clean that float. Now when I take it, it won't bring out too much of the sand or aggregate. And how wet is this, guys? Let's find out. Kirk's the best. Uh, that's, that's pretty dry right there where it's really thick down here. He sucks. No glory in being the best, guys, except you work your butt off. So we've got about three inches right there. I could keep doing that, but then i got to float my own workout. Anyway, guys, we thank you for watching. Dan and I and Carl want to wish you a happy New Year. And we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks, we want to thank you for watching how we do things in the stucco and plastering world. We really enjoy your questions and comments. So if there's anything you want to learn about that we can show you, please let us know in the comments. And as always, from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one.